Good morning, everyone. It's Rabbi Akiva Males. I hope you're well. Today is Friday. It's September 11th. We're getting ready for Parshas Netzavim and Vayelach. As we all know, we're living in the middle of a pandemic, and these last six months have been extremely challenging for each and every one of us on so many different levels. And there's nobody who's really been able to uh, escape this. In one fashion or another, each and every one of us has sacrificed, and each and every one of us have seen in some fashion or another, our lives have been greatly, greatly affected by this. And every now and then I'll hear people say that, okay, well, we're in the process of reopening. Things are gradually just getting back to normal. We're adjusting to a new normal. We've just got face masks. We've got some additional hand washing, sanitizing. We've got some distancing. So we're back on track. But it's so not true. There's still so much about this, which is so far from normal. And we're begging our Kaddosh Baruch Hu, we're davening to Hashem, that we want this to all end as soon as possible. And I think there's one aspect in particular. I know there are many, but there's one aspect in particular that I was thinking about this week, that even with our return to something of, or to some degree of normalcy, it's just been so radically affected and we just have not been able to have just been, not been able to compensate for. Let me share that with you because it's tied to the Parsha. So in Vayelach, the second of the two Parshios that we're going to read this Shabbos, so we bring up the mitzvah of Hakel. Hakel is that mitzvah that every uh, seven years, all of B'nai Israel would gather in the courtyard of the Beis HaMikdash, and the Melech, the king, would read to us from Sefer Devarim. And the Pasuk says as follows, Hakel asama anashim vahanashim vahataf. It's important that we assemble everybody, all of the men, all of the women, and the top, the top are the little ones, even the infants, and all of the uh, gerim that are in our gates, in order that everyone should hear and everyone should listen, and that we should all learn and and we will all be very vigilant in observing all of the words of this Torah. That is, that is what we're told in the mitzvah of Hakel. And Rashi quotes a very famous Gemara in Chagiga, that it says as follows, on Hashem, when it says that all the men have to gather, that corresponds to the Pasuk saying, uh, um, Lil Mod, the Pasuk says, Laman Yomadu, that they have to learn what's going on. And then when it says, Van Hashem, and it says that the women are also gathering, that corresponds to when the Pasuk said, Laman Yishmu, the women are there, Lishmoa, they're there to hear everything that's going on. But then the Rashi quotes on the, on the word of the Pasuk, Vahataf, the infants, the very young ones. What are they doing there? So Rashi quotes again the Gemara and Chagiga, Vahataf, Lama Boim. What is the purpose of them coming? They're unable to learn. They're not, unable to, to listen and understand anything what's going on. This can't be for them. So the Gemara says in Chagiga, Lase Schar Lamevi'ayim. The only reason why those infants, the only reason why those very young ones were there was to bring merit to those who bring them. That was the reason. But you're right, for their own purposes of being there, they didn't understand, they couldn't comprehend what was going on. But this was to, uh, to bring schar, this was to bring merit to the parents, those who were to bring those very young children there. I saw an incredible Dvar Torah this week from Rav Nassim Adler. Rav Nassim Adler was one of the rabbeim who made a very, very strong impact on the great Chassam Sofer. We know that the Chassam Sofer of Moshe Sofer was one of the titans, one of the great Jewish leaders of the 1800s in Europe. And the Chassam Sofer was privileged that one of the rabbeim who made an incredible impact on him in his de developmental years was none other than Rav Nassim Adler. And I saw a beautiful thought from Rav Nassim Adler on this Pasuk. Let me share it with you. It says as follows, Amr Chazal, he's quoting again the Gemara in Chagiga that says, our sages taught us, what was the reason why the extremely young ones, those infants, why were they brought to the mitzvah of Hakel? What, what could they possibly gain from this? So the Gemara said, in order to give merits to those who bring them to the parents. So here's what Rav Nassim Adler had to say. He's bothered by like, well, why would a parent have thought initially not to bring that child? What, what, what's the reason not to? What's the big deal? Bring the child. You're, everyone's going to the base and make dash. Bring the children's too. What, what would have been the Havamina that someone said, would say, let me leave him at home? Listen to what he says. Nelson Eller says, avos. Because of the fact that the really young ones are there, this gets kind of distracting for the parents who bring them. 
the whole mitzvah of HaKel is being there when the Melech, when the king is reading from Sefer Devarim. But now if I've got to look after the young ones, and this one wants this, this one wants that, and they're tugging at the sleeve and whatnot, it's a little bit distracting. I'm not going to be able to give my absolute full attention to the Melech when he's reading the Torah. And therefore the parents might think, you know what, maybe it's better that we just leave the kids at home. So we'll get the best spiritual experience from this. Therefore the Torah emphasizes, by the fact that they bring the children to the base of Mikdash, the parents get more merit for this. The parents have to make a cheshman. The parents have to make a decision. What's better? Should I leave the kids at home and I'll be able to get this incredibly spiritual experience being in the Beis HaMikdash, listening to Hakel from the Melech, from the king who's reading? Or should I bring the kids and be involved in some aspect of chenach? And what the Torah is saying is, no, this is maybe scharlami v'yayim. This is going to bring scharlami. This is going to bring merits. Don't make the mistake of thinking they'll have a greater spiritual experience by not bringing the kids and focusing just on the parents. Instead, bring the kids, in a sense, sacrifice some of their own spiritual uh, experience in order to share with the children, and ultimately, that will be more worthwhile for the parents. Mizei Yeshlomot, Sir of Nasanelar says, what do we learn from this? Shetov levatel ma'at mishlema shalo. It's best for a parent, it's best for an adult, to be mevatel, to be willing to give up some of their own spiritual accomplishments, in order to educate the children, in order to inspire the children with the proper spirit of Torah. What a powerful lesson. Now, how do we apply this to our own shuls? That's a little bit different. We have a mitzvah to hear, a kriyas Torah, and to daven b'tzibor. If kids aren't old enough to accord and to behave themselves properly, okay, so then they don't come to shul until a certain point. It's a mitzvah, different mitzvah about a Besa Knesset. But here he is, he's talking about specifically the mitzvah of hakel, which may not have had the same dinim of what we have in shul on a weekly basis. But here's the mitzvah of hakel. And the way Rav Nassim Adler is explaining it is parents had a choice to make. Do I only focus on my own ruchnias? And if I focus on my own spiritual striving, I'll get more out of this, I might think, if I just leave the kids at home. Or do I bring the kids with me? And it may be a little bit distracting, but there's chinuch involved. The kids will grow from the experience. He says what Chazal are teaching us in Chagiga is ultimately, even though it may seem counterintuitive, ultimately the parents will gain more from that experience by being mechanech, by being involved with the education of their children. I think in my mind, one of the most distrusting aspects of these last six months, of course, this pales in comparison to those families who have suffered the loss of loved ones, or close ones, or relatives who have gotten horribly sick. Of course, nothing could compare to that. Or those who have been lost their jobs, terrible, absolutely terrible ramifications have come out of these last six months. But one of the most striking details that's hit me is how so many children's chinuch has been stunted. Their spiritual development, their education, their Torah education has been stunted as a result of this coronavirus. And this has affected schools. They did their best when they had to move to Zoom. Now schools are doing their best to educate in person for those who are able to do so. There's still many children who aren't able for one reason or another to come to school. So they're doing their best to educate. Uh, the parents are doing the best working together with the schools to continue to educate those children in a distance fashion with Zoom. And, and they're working very hard on this. And there's kids who are back at school. As much as that's seen some kind of return to normal, one place where we have not seen, and we're unfortunately not able to have this return to normalcy, it's been the show. And many people could say, it's great, we've got our minyanim to some degree or another going again. They're distanced, they're masked, they're shorter. It's not the same, but at least there's that essence of minyan. That may be true, but let's look around the show. Let's look around the base matters next time we're there and recognize something is missing. There's no taf. We don't have those young ones. There are kids who are bar mitzvah a year or two younger than bar mitzvah but we don't have all those smiling, happy children at a younger age. That's what's missing. That was present at Hakel. That was for Anashim, Nashim Vitaf, for kids of all ages. Unfortunately, now, due to the circumstances we're in, we're just not there yet. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu understands. He doesn't have a tzvi, he doesn't have a complaint against us. But on our part, we should be asking, we should be turning to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and saying, Hashem, here's another reason I'm asking you to end this virus. There are so many kids whose Jewish educations have been stunted, whether that's in the classroom, at school, 
or whether that's in shul. So many kids are missing out on that davening experience. They're, being, they're missing out on our modern day form of hakel. It's not once every seven years for a lot of kids. It's once every seven days coming to shul on Shabbos and how that's such a special experience for them. And, and Nebuch, there's unfortunately so many Jewish children who are missing out on that. And we can't change that right now. It's for their best interest and it's for our best interest. There are many, many logistical reasons why we can't change that right now. But it's important that we recognize the fact that Klai Yisrael is suffering for this. And it's one, it's, it's one thing for us to recognize it, but we have to ask Hashem to recognize us as well and say, have Rechmonas on us. I know at the end of my Shmon Asrei every day, I try to ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu numerous reasons why you should put an end to this virus as soon as possible. All the upheavals this is causing in our world and society. And one of the things that I make sure to emphasize in there is, is I say Hashem, this has affected the Chinuch, this has affected the Jewish education, it's stunted the growth of so many children in our communities and around the world. Have Rachmanus on them. Please, Hashem. It's something to think about this Shabbos as we lay we read about the mitzvah of Hakel, and we say, yes, once every seven years, all the children had a chance to grow from that experience. And let's ask Hashem, at least once every seven days, let our Jewish children have this experience once again. Please bring that soon. I want to conclude with one idea. And this hit me this morning, is that this idea of asking Hashem to have Rachmanus on our kids who have suffered, their chinuch has suffered in the course of this coronavirus, we're going to be saying our Avinu Malkenu soon. Rosh Hashanah is almost upon us. It's a week away, and that begins at Sarasunei Tshuva. We're going to be saying the Avinu Malkenus. Let's be cognizant of one of those Avinu Malkenus, and let's have, here's something to think about as we recite it throughout this Yom Tov season. We say towards that, excuse me, Avinu Malkenu, our Father, our King, Chamol Aleinu, please take pity on us, have mercy on us. Va'al ololeinu v'tapenu, and upon our children and our infants. What did that mean last year? I don't know. Everyone had different ideas. What ololeinu v'tapenu, asking Hashem to have rachmanus on our children and our infants, what that could have meant last year. But I know what I'll be thinking of this year. I'll be thinking of this year, have rachmanus on our children, on the infants. There are so many Jewish children locally, nationally, around the globe, whose chenech, their Jewish education has been stunted as a result of this coronavirus. If you're not going to have mercy on us, on the adults, we don't have the zuchusim, at least think of those innocent Jewish children who, who want nothing more than to return to a life of normalcy and to have a full Jewish education, whether that's in the classroom, because we said there's still, it's so different, even for the kids who could attend, it's so different, it's not the same. And there's still so many children who haven't been able to return to the classroom. But let's also think about shul. Such an important aspect of children's chinuch takes place in shul. And that's just something with all we've been trying to compensate and give it the best that we can during this virus, during this pandemic. One thing we haven't been able to do, unfortunately, is to replace that chinuch, that Jewish education that takes place in the shul for the children of all ages. So let's turn to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in these Yemei Ratzon, in these days when Hashem is willing to listen to our prayers more than he may have the rest of the year, now let's think about this sincerely when we say, Avinu malkenu chamol aleinu v'al aleinu v'tapenu. Hashem have rachmanus on us, but more have rachmanus on our children and on the infants. Allow them to have the chinech, the Torah education that they've been deprived of for these last six months. And soon, bimheru b'yameinu, please put an end to this virus, all the negative ripple effects, but especially how it's impacting the children, the, all of the Jewish children, whose Jewish education has suffered during this time. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu respond to all of our tefillos, may put an end to this, and may all of our children have a full return to the chinuch, to the Jewish educational experiences that they all so deserve, and each and every one of us want them to experience. Have a good Shabbos, everyone.